Nearman Condition, the home of Collected oh, Edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. It is finally here, the book that you all have been wanting me to do an advance look of. So, this is the Uncanny Omar from Nearman Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And I'm giving you all the advanced look at the monster size Hellboy hardcover from Dark Horse Comics. This book is huge. Join me. I figured it'd be a good time about a week before Halloween to do this particular advanced look. I, so we're still looking at Spooktober, right? Spooktober, is that what we're calling it? Regardless. Big thank you to the folks at Dark Horse Comics for sending us this big, beautiful book. So this book is due out everywhere, direct market and book market on October 31st. Some people, I know some of my viewers have already gotten it, depending on where you get your books and where you live, because places overseas sometimes sell books before the release date. But the actual release date is October 31st or November 1st, depending on where you get your books. Uh, so we're going to take a quick look at this. Uh, it does not have a dust jacket, it's just art on board, and speaking of art, that is a brand new piece by series creator and character creator Mike Mignola. So we have Monster Size Hellboy. I do like the fact that they're sticking with these names, right? You had Colossal Conan, you had Big Damn Sin City, and now you have Monster Size Hellboy. And we'll do a size comparison, believe me, here in a second. Mike Mignola and others, because he's not alone. Monster Size Hellboy, and there he is himself. Hellboy, just his face, and Mike Mignola and others, and the Dark Horse logo. It's really interesting to see a spine like this, because there's so much black, so much space here. And speaking of space, there we go. It looks like a negative of the front board, or the art on the front board. Now, this book did come inside of its own little box, labeled the Monster Size Hellboy hardcover, uh, and it did come sealed in plastic and it had a leaflet the leaflet right here telling you what's collected in here and where it was originally released and then of course the isbn and the retail price and speaking of retail price this one is 150 dollars let's look at it from this angle here uh to kind of give you an idea as you all probably remember if you have the previous collections, the original Hellboys, they were printed in these uh, black pages. And I'll show you here in a little bit. But let's do a quick size comparison because we're talking about a monster size book. This book is bigger than your omnibus. So first thing is the standard hardcovers. So these are the trim size of trade paperbacks and single issues. They're just a little bit taller because they are actually hardcover. So this is how big it looks compared to these. And speaking of Omnibus, no matter if it's Marvel or DC, here it is compared to the size of a Marvel Omnibus. Marvel and DC having the same trim size, including some of the things like from IDW, like the Ninja Turtles compendiums, the hardcovers. They're the exact same trim size as these. Just to kind of give you another angle here. It's how much taller and bigger this book is. All right, let's go ahead and compare it to another of these huge books from Dark Horse. This is Big Damn Sin City. And here's Monster Size Hellboy. Now, they also have the Colossal Conan, but Big Dan Sim City actually has more pages than any of the Colossal Conans. It might be as tall, but it's not as thick. And that's because Hellboy, Monster Size, has 1,512 pages, whereas Big Dan Sim City has 1,360 pages. This book is so big, it almost looks like a flat spine, whereas you can see the curve here on this edition. Again, no dust jacket now i wanted to compare it to the size of other books and then we'll do of course the library edition of hellboy uh, but this is the absolute edition looking a little bit taller but then again it's in its slips case outside of the slip case it looks about the same dimensions it's about as tall and as long as the monster size book and here's the gallery edition and these gallery editions don't fit in your kalaxes like i've said before and they're a little bit taller. I mean, you can get them in there. You have to squeeze them in there, but you harm the top of the board. Uh, so they are taller and longer than this monster size book. As a matter of fact, this is where I keep my big books in one Kalax. Uh, so 
It, they do fit inside of a Kalex for the people wondering if they can put them in there. And of course, I have to compare it to the size of the library editions. I love these books. Uh, this is my favorite way of owning them. And I brought out Volume 2 because, well, even though this has over 1,500 pages, it doesn't collect everything that the library editions do. Not yet. I mean, they could later on, which I'm pretty sure they will. And I'll explain why as I talk about the book. Uh, but... As you can tell, it's not as tall, but it is just a little bit longer, and we'll compare the art in a little bit. We're going to crack this book open, showcase the artwork, talk a little bit about the story, because I'm sure most of you all know what Hellboy is, and if you've been coming to my channel, I've talked about Hellboy a lot, but in, just in case, for anybody that has never read it, I'll give you the pitch, and of course, compare it to the library editions, mainly the internal artwork. All right, let's do it. All right, let's get this big boy opened. We have some black end sheets. Monster size Hellboy. On the left-hand side is the credits for the people that at Dark Horse putting this stuff together. Uh, here is your table of contents, starting it off with Seed of Destruction. And this is pretty much the four omnibus editions of Hellboy. And when I say omnibus editions, they are trade paperbacks, thick trade paperbacks. Like I've seen, you, if you've been watching my channel when I do overviews of Dark Horse trade paperbacks and hardcovers, they are the standard size trade paperbacks, uh, but they're thick. They've got over 500 pages. And this is pretty much all four of them together. So I'll talk about how this is mapped and of course what's missing from here. But first, let me just, in case you don't even know what Hellboy is, what the heck is Hellboy? Or rather, what the hell is Hellboy? Hellboy is an amazing magnum opus, or I like to call it his magnum opus. Uh, Mike Mignola had this idea all the way back in 1994 uh, to tell the story about the summoning of a demon in the year 1944. And when Rasputin and a bunch of wizards got together with Nazis, they were trying to summon a demon to destroy all of Earth. However... The spell goes wrong, and instead of a giant demon coming out of hell, a young little boy comes out, and that is Hellboy, as Professor Broom called him there. So Professor Broom ends up taking the boy in, the Hellboy in, and eventually Hellboy ends up joining uh, the BPRD, gets his American citizenship, and everybody knows who he is, and, you know, he's a good guy, he's a... He, he fights demons, um, but yeah, he ends up joining the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense, and that, of course, is the BPRD. Now, through these very pages, you're going to meet some very important characters like Professor Zoom, uh, Zoom, sorry, had a Zoom call earlier today, uh, Professor Broom, who, of course, took him in, raised him, and introduced him to a bunch of other characters. He, he And even when he appears here, he was always into the paranormal, if you will, and that comes into play over and over again. Uh, you're going to meet a lot of the characters from the BPRD in here, like Abe Sapien and Johan Cross, uh, Liz Sherman and Kate Corrigan, and other big characters that play huge important parts in Hellboy's life, such as Alice uh, Monaghan, or uh, characters like Lobster Johnson, or Roger, and all these characters that you if you want to expand your knowledge of the Hellboy universe, you'll see in books like Abe Sapien or books like Lobster Johnson or BPRD, mainly BPRD, but even other characters here are mentioned that briefly make an appearance and show up in books like uh, Witchfinder. And it's just the Magnolia universe is so huge. And this is mapped in chronological order so it's mapped differently than the hellboy library editions those are mapped in publishing orders with some of the short stories in there uh, in between this on the other hand is mapped in chronological order and i like the reading order in this more than i did the library editions uh, so when they released the omnibus box set of all four volumes in one box set i almost got it just because i like that well, the accessibility of having the trade paperback to just take them as you go instead of these big library editions. But also, the reading order, I think it's well put together and well thought of. 
Uh, not that there was anything wrong with the library editions, they were just putting them out as they were coming out. So that is something to keep in mind. If you have the omnibus editions, this is pretty much all four volumes, except it's in a huge format compared to the trade paperbacks. Now, if you own the uh, omnibus editions, I said the first four, this doesn't include the short story collections. I believe there's two collections of those. Those were collected in the library editions, like sometimes after the main story arc. So there's usually two stories in each of these, uh, but sometimes they would have the short stories at the beginning. Sometimes they would have the short stories towards the end of uh, the collections. For example, this is, I think this is an Iser winner, Pancakes which is just two pages of a young Hellboy eating pancakes. This short story, even though it's written and drawn by Mignola, is not collected in this monster-sized book. Uh, this is just the main story arc. So let's talk about that, because you have Seed of Destruction, Wake the Devil, Wolves of St. August, uh, The Chain Coffin, Almost Colossus, and The Right Hand of Doom. Conqueror Worms, Strange Places, Into the Silent Sea, which is one of my favorite stories that they did. Uh, you also have The Right Hand of Doom, Box Full of Evil, Being Human, and the... Actually, I think it has both the Hellboy and BPRD Being Human. Darkness Calls, The Wild Hunt, The Storm and the Fury. Uh, it does contain a couple of short stories that I think are very important, and that's towards uh, the back here. And I'll talk a little bit about more of those here in a few. It's got all the Hellboy in Hell, and the two stories that are collected in the back are The Magician and the Snake, and the Exorcist of Borsk. So those are the short stories that are also collected in here, as well as the Mole. And beautiful Mignola artwork. And one of my favorite things about this is, like, towards the beginning, you can see his writing sharpening. You can see uh, his line work just becoming more and more sure of himself, like the contrast between the black and the whites. It, it's just amazing to go from here to later on when... This is just kind of him just having fun, telling the stories that he wants to tell without any kind of editorial mandate stepping in, going, hey, you can't use that character. Because that's the beauty of going in a Hellboy. You don't need to read anything before it. There's not 30, 40 years of history that you're, you know, holding you down from enjoying the story. You go into it completely new. And of course, it expands from here because there's the BPRD stuff. And for those, oh, I love the story. This is the one about the sea and into the silent sea absolutely love the story the twist at the end and then this is also when mignola was kind of changing things around uh when he talks about him being underwater how exactly how long was he down there uh, i think it changes from story to story from this story i know uh until they mention it later on so this is rated t plus by the way you know there's some violence in here but it's a lot of demons slaying other demons so to kind of give you a synopsis as to you know what exactly is happening through these pages like we're talking about over 1500 pages uh we have the main story arc right where we are introduced to hellboy in the world uh world war ii so 1944 and then we get to see his origin story we get to see him join the bprd and then eventually they decide to part way. So he parts way with the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense. And eventually he plays a big important part in the world, mainly in England, but all over the world. And there's a lot of things in here. That's all oh, the beauty of Hellboy. I could just go on and on. Is that he mixes all these myths and lores from all over the world. There's Japanese lore, Russian, and, and like... It ties into King Arthur and the Sword of Excalibur and this whole myth about a dragon that has been in the back of his mind since he confronted Rasputin at the very beginning of this journey. And it all comes to play in these particular storylines. Now, you're probably noticing, wait a minute, that doesn't look like Mike Mignola. You would be right. Because if you noticed at the very beginning, Mike Mignola and others... There are other people that come in and do the artwork. Mainly, it's Duncan Fregedro, who does an amazing job. And of course, it helps to have Dave Stewart's colors just tying it all in uh, with Clem Robbins on lettering. Uh, but it is mainly the artwork of Duncan Fregedro. Uh, 
But I'd be a fool not to mention there are other artists in here that you may have heard of, like this gentleman right here, Richard Corbin, drawing the story of being human. While Mignola is still writing a lot of the stuff in here. Now, worry not, because by the time we get a... There's the girl I was talking about, Alice. Um, by the time we do get to Hellboy in Hell, Mike Mignola does make a return to the character, not just to write the stories, but also draw the stories. And it's such a beautiful, just tying everything together, the things that he had been leading up to, and the payoff, it's just awesome. One of the things you may have noticed as I'm flipping through here, and I swear that's all I will show of the end here, because I don't want to spoil that for anybody, is the way that the book is broken down. So you have the Seed of Destruction, is how this uh, is kicked off with, of course, the Finding of Hellboy. And then you have a little... Actually, there's not a lot of extras, is what I was going to say, but this was part of the story. Uh, you have this introduction here to Chapter 2. So there are no covers. And all the way in the back, censoring the final page, which is just a short story, but doesn't matter. There's a black and white version, so just the inks of the cover, and then the colors without the text, which is the brand new piece that Mike Mignola did for this collection. And all the other Hellboy stories, including the different formats, like the library edition, uh, the omnibus edition, and all the other work of Mike Mignola, and then your end sheets. So, the same thing as the Omnibus Edition. So, if you're a fan of, like, sketches and the covers, yeah, this doesn't really have those outside of just a few. And it's usually when you're starting a new storyline, there's just one or two covers, and then you're broken down into different chapters. So, not like the previous collections. And sometimes, there's also, like, character designs early concept art like this. This was the very first drawing of Hellboy that Mignola did. It's not every time because, like I said, there's not a lot of covers. It's mainly just one big cover and it's textless. doesn't tell you where it originated from. And then the chapter breaks. Now, the book is printed in this thick, glossy paper. That's what they're using here. Not really as thick as the library editions, uh, but Almost, almost. There's hardly any bleed through, and there are some scenes that take place during the daytime, so you should be able to tell if there is bleed through. Even though most of the story takes place at nighttime, there is still some daytime stories or just light colors like this, uh, where you, know, you would see mainly a lot of the artwork bleeding through, but it's very, very minimal. Here we go. And as another plus, it comes with a ribbon, and of course, it has to be the color red. So you can. Mark your place where you last left off on Hellboy. So we talked about the paper stock, and we talked about the ribbon. Let's look at the binding. 1,512 pages. Look at that freaking eye. It's humongous. I can almost fit my... Nope, not even going to try that. It is sewn binding. And like I said, 1,512 pages. It's a huge eye, and that's nice because it makes the spread pages uh, look really nice. You don't have any gutter loss, hardly. Now... One thing I did notice, though, is that the spine itself is not as sturdy as the spine on things like the Colossal Conan or Marvel Omnis or DC Omnis. Um, so keep that in mind, especially if you're reading it flat. You know, I'm sure people are going to worry that it might crease. I think, you know, you would have to actually force that in there in order for that to happen. But just keep it in mind as you're either reading it flat or, you know, you're reading it like I can't imagine too many people just reading it like this Woo, it gets i mean this is a heavy book now what i want to do is compare the internal artwork to that of the library edition because i don't have the omnis anymore i gave those away all right let's go ahead and do this so library edition on the left hand side and of course the monster size on the right uh, there are no introductions in here and like i said the paper stock of the library edition is just a little thicker than these. Uh, so, chapter one, Seed of Destruction. And the other thing, like I mentioned earlier, is that the dimensions of the library editions are longer than these, even though the paper stock here is a little taller. Uh, but the colors themselves look about the same. It's a little bit darker in this edition than the library edition. 
And if you're wondering, you know, which way to collect Hellboy, I'm just kind of giving you the logistics of it. Like, I'm just letting you know, if you want to go the omnibus route, those are 1,600 pages. So there's about 88 more pages than the monster size book. So those are mainly extras and covers and sketches. And then there's about 2,250 plus pages of all seven of the library editions. Keep in mind, there's six volumes plus the Hellboy in Hell. And each one of those is $50 or $49.99, forgive me. Uh, the omnibus editions are $29.99 and there's only four. So all, also it's the cost of these things. And I'm supposed to be doing a comparison. So uh, yeah, this is what it looks like. Like I said, the artwork is just a little bit darker and that's also probably due to the paper stock that they're using. If you need all of the extras, like the covers, the character designs, the sketches, the library edition is the way to go. The, the, the short stories, like my favorite one here in volume two, the one that kicks it off, Pancakes. It's in here right before the main stories. The library edition is the way to go. They're also collected, the, the short stories are also collected in two thick trade paperbacks of the, I think they're short stories, omnibus editions is what they're called, but they are not in this edition. Now, maybe later on there could be a companion where they can collect more of the Hellboy stories like the secret histories or the weird tells um, and, and things like that, but not yet. Right now, this is what we got and this is a quick comparison. So if you want everything, maybe the library edition is the way to go. If you want just the Hellboy stories and you don't care about extras, you don't care about anybody's thoughts or introductions on the subject matter, and covers are here or there, there are some, with just a little bit of sketches, and cost efficiency, oh my gosh, yeah, this, over the seven, seven volumes, $50 each, or $49.99 each. Um, but that's it. Yeah, this book is huge. It's, it's got to be one of my heaviest books. I mean, it's bigger than Colossal Conan and Big Dan Sin City. It, oh my gosh, yeah. Got to work out to lift this sucker. Hmm. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this big monster size book, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, Emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! Cheapgraphicnovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and page count and build of this monster size book. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking it up, if you have the omnibus editions, if you have the trade paperbacks, if you have the library editions, or if you have the single issues. However it is you own Hellboy, let me know in the comments down below in which is your favorite way to read it. And if you've never read Hellboy and this is your wake up call to go and read Hellboy, this big edition, by all means, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. That lets you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel, and thank you so much to our patrons. Could I be doing videos like this without you all? Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.